So I've tested three out of four. I would have tested four out of four, but it's under this muffler system, so I can't get to the fourth one. And they all came up with zero, which is never good. Not good. Very expensive. So now we have to switch this uh, propane unit onto this generator, and we'll uh, be okay for the moment, but that's going to be an expensive item there, unfortunately. Those are something like a pamper or something I got at some thrift store. I got a big box of them, and they cost me like a nickel each, so I use them for soaking up crap. Since I don't need them yet. <coughs> well, it's a sad day in Mudville. The battery itself, roughly $300, plus you have to go buy one. And this is going to have to be re-ringed, if not uh, new pistons. We'll find out when we get it apart further than you would expect. All right, so the intake manifold is split. The exhaust manifold it's, is loosened and ready to come off. Oh, damn, it fell off. That's there, yeah. so. That's where the lifter was, the engine yeah. lifting hook. Yeah. So because we have to remove number one, we have to remove this front assembly because there is a piece of the uh, oil pump assembly that's in the way of number one. Okay. That's surprising. So the book glide, we didn't have to remove this cover to get this strainer and pressure relief valve out. But the book says that's what you had to do. But you don't have to remove that cover to get those two pieces out. It's that piece and this piece here. Okay. So you can get those from the engine crankcase side. We got number one loose. Now, would do you think, is there a clearance problem for most people trying to get in there? Like you got that funky little funny wrench. <laughs> would you have been able to get that without the funky wrench? Very possibly. Show them how that works. Yeah. So that helps get it out. It's very snug inside there. So you'll probably have to break the ridge off here. And when you're driving these up, you're going to be making a, uh, a fulcrum, a lever down below to help tap these up. We use pieces of wood. So forewarned is forearmed with this engine. Do not buy a Lister Petters engine because the piston rings are almost $200 each. That's 800 bucks with tax. 50 bucks, 50 bucks. So to, to do this was like $1,300 to re-ring this. There's a number on the cap. The cap, that number's out here if you don't have a manual. Uh, they torque to 26 pounds. Now that head gasket's $360, not $50. So you've been warned. I mean, I've sold good... Uh, GMC 30 kilowatt diesel stuff for three grand. That was just beautiful stuff. Uh, that's the going price. You can lose your ass on this and you're dealing with gasoline or propane, which is the upside down way to do uh, power generation. You use much more gas, two and a half times more gas than diesel. Think about this. It, uh, there's no index, there's no reference system on it. It was threaded normally, it wasn't threaded backwards. It has what might be a, a magnetic pulser. So, anyhow, we've removed it. <laughs> we had no choice. So you need to insert these rubbers into the head first. There's no guiding for the head gasket. No stud. There's no guiding for these to get into the head, so have fun. So the pattern is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you come all the way around here, but don't trust it because we just came back to number one after torquing, and we had to put another 10 pounds or so on these, and that's why we're Well, going not 10 pounds, but we had to few bring it back up. These all belong over here. We made a boo-boo. These carry the rocker. These nuts have a number on them. The number goes face down. So 
make sure these surfaces are clean and uh, this has an o-ring we didn't replace I'm going to put silicone around that and that'll help create the seal so put this fan belt in place first uh, you can route this bracket and wiring across here uh, this will swing down you can swing it into place and then you can tighten everything up that's the only way you can do it. you have to have this in place first so to set the timing you have to remove the starter motor and then perhaps you can see the little slits in the flywheel back there. there's a number 10 that I can see and there's a number uh, I think 24 and you'll turn it this is propane so I'm assuming it's 11 because the book doesn't tell me and uh, then we go up to the rotor so I have a set at 11 then you come up here and you loosen up this bolt and you can rotate it and I use the spark plug and when the spark plug sparks then that's the timing mark and you tighten that bolt down so this is at 11 